Melanie Beckler and Miles Beckler here with ask-angels.com. We're going to be talking to you today about money and spirituality. There's a very limited belief that's still circling around in some spiritual communities that money and spirituality don't go together. We, however, know this is far from the truth and abundance is a huge part of spirituality. So to start things off, Miles, would you be willing to share how you see spirituality and abund spirituality and money, spirituality sure. and abundance being yeah. connected? Absolutely. Awesome. So in in my opinion, you know, everything in this world is vibration. We live in a vibrational universe. It's kind of a holographic universe. And whether we're talking about a, a physical table, if you zoom in enough, it's a wavelength, right? It's just it's just energy moving, and money is just energy. Uh, that's all money really is. It's a flow of energy. And I think that as humans, we have the ability to open ourselves up to be conduits to flow that energy. Just as a Reiki person learns how to flow the Reiki energies or an angel energy healer learns how to flow those energies, we can learn how to flow the money energy as well. Because money is nothing. Like it's printed on linen it's not backed by anything. It's printed at will. Like it really truly is an inanimate thing that we've given this kind of, everybody buys into the idea of it's, it's a stored energy, right? So we go work a full day of work and in that full day of work, we make a certain number of dollars and then that's that stored energy and those dollars sit in our bank accounts as digital digits and then we use them to pay for rent and other things. And it's, it literally, it's a, it's a form of stored energy and it in no way, shape or form is good or bad, or it doesn't really mean anything. It's just energy. And if one wants to flow with that energy, they can. One other thing, I, sorry if I'm going off on a no, rant to start. <laughs> um, we can't really help anybody without money, right? Like if we don't have enough money to take care of ourselves, we are a burden on others. And that is not being of service in any way, shape or form. Absolutely. And I mean, really, if we right now we're working a traditional nine to five job trying to get money, we wouldn't be making these videos. I right. wouldn't be able to put out the channeled messages and teachings every and day that value you've been putting that out. Way. So before you go on, I do want to sure. touch on one thing you said about <laughs> about money being energy and money being a store, right? So you mentioned that you go to work, you, or you provide value in some way, you create money and then you spend that on rent, on food, on groceries, <laughs> on whatever. So I think this is sort of at the root of where the disconnect between money and spirituality comes in. Back in, say, Native American times, the shaman, was the spiritual leader of the tribe and the tribe took care of the shaman. So the tribe members didn't have to pay the shaman for spiritual teachings because the tribe provided food and shelter for the shaman so they could completely focus on their spirituality. Well, this just isn't how our world is set up and works anymore. And so for spiritual teachers to be taken care of, there needs to be the balance of giving and receiving, which is comes in the form of offering services for money rather than offering the services for free and by default be taken care of by the tribe. So that just popped in when you were yeah. talking about that. And I wanted to, clear. to clarify about that because not very much, but from time to time it does come up from people oh, you shouldn't be charging for spiritual services. Spiritual services should be free. And I understand where that belief comes from, like what I just explained, but really it comes down to balanced giving and receiving. So would you say being in the flow of money is being in balance with giving yep. and receiving? Absolutely, and it, it is a flow. It's like, I look at money as like water flowing, right? And when water is flowing, it's clear, it's clean. When water stagnates, right? When water just sits and pools up and starts to slowly dry up and get smaller and smaller, it turns stagnant and literally can turn absolutely nasty. So it is a total flow. And to take your idea one step further, it's not just the time that we have created through the business we've created, but it's also 
the hardware, the software, the cameras, the microphones, the servers, and and it's not. It, there's a lot that goes into kind of these leveraged providing of services and products. And as we have been kind of growing on our abundance path, like we've been reinvesting that to then reach more and more people. And when we first started our first free thing and, and everything that was on the free conference call and we were trying to do the conference call things, which is like eight, nine years ago, if any of you remember those days. Comment um, below if you remember. <laughs> and we weren't reaching anyone. We were able to reach a few people. It was a poor experience for them. It, it was not smooth. And it was kind of through our ability to keep investing in and continue to reinvest in and continue. And we're still investing in personal development and, and some of the hardwares and software developments. And um, it's really interesting. And I believe that is what I'm getting at as being a conduit for it. The goal is not to be a bucket that fills with it and then to go hurdle around one's bucket right. thereof. Exactly. It's flowing it back out into other areas. We're now doing charitable work. We give to multiple charities at this point. And that's kind of what you were getting at when you were saying, like, if you are in the flow of money, if you're making more money, you can then choose to flow some of that forth beyond you towards right. charitable organizations, towards making a positive difference in the world bringing clean drinking water to people and right. these sorts of things. And even on a small scale, with whatever money you do have, be mindful about where you're spending that. Are you flowing it directly towards big corporations that don't have the interest of humanity, that don't have the highest interest of humanity in mind? Can you divert that a little bit to buy healthy, organic things that are creating more positive in the world so or even potentially choosing to look on etsy for a handcrafted handbag versus yeah. amazon for the mass produced in china shipped across the the ocean on a boat type thing like buying local buying organic yeah. that is how and that's another we'll version vote with our money and it's that energy right so you're flow who do you want to flow your energy to that big corporation and that big tanker that shipped all a container of bags across an ocean or some artisan craftsperson in, I don't know, Oregon or, you know, where, yeah. wherever that person would be through Etsy and do a direct exchange and help them continue forward in there. And yeah, every, every dollar we spend is literally a vote for or against something. And I can't remember exactly where we learned this, maybe you do, but we had learned early on when, because being in the flow of money, just so you know, has not always been I easy for Miles and I either. We've had it's not our natural of state of being. Be it is our natural state of being, though. Abundance but we've is, not okay. always been aligned with it. So Touché. we've we've gone through incredible challenges around money and totally living paycheck to paycheck and worse, borrowing, um, moving in with Miles' parents. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make is we became students of not only spirituality and personal development, but abundance. And one of the big shifts for me was recognizing the opportunity when spending money, that that is an opportunity to express gratitude. So if you have a pile of bills in front of you, you could vibrationally let that weigh you down. Oh my gosh, I have to pay the electric bill, I have to pay internet, I have to pay whatever other bills you have. Or you could vibrationally shift your energy around it and think, wow, I'm grateful that I have electricity as you're paying that electricity bill. I am so grateful I have internet. Like Because I have internet, I'm able to watch YouTube, I'm able to download meditations and all these positive things when you're buying a coffee from a coffee shop rather than ah oh, four dollars for coffee wow that's so expensive you can shift that to i'm grateful for this opportunity to not only buy a cup of coffee but i'm grateful for the person who's going to make it for me the person ringing me up at the cash register and this little vibrational shift is huge for bringing you into the flow of abundance, for aligning your energy positively with money by changing beliefs. Does that bring up anything for you about other things people can do to get into the flow of money, to align positively with money? Sorry to throw you on this. No, it's, it's okay. Kind of a, and, and A tough question. Let me say one more thing okay. then, while you're thinking about that. Um, 
Another thing to really align with the flow of money that's made a big difference for me is shifting from solely focusing on myself and how do I create more money in my life to how can I help more people? How can I be of service and give value to the world and to the community? And I think if you can also start to make this shift, even in small, subtle ways, it will be powerful for aligning you with the flow of money. Um, I had heard once that the amount of money you receive is in direct correlation to the amount of value you give to the world. If you're not sure how to give value, start small. This could be baking healthy organic treats. It could be volunteering. And who knows, maybe when you volunteer, you then meet someone in an opportunity alliance. It's not linear. Get in service, start giving value, and through that you align with so much more. I think that's big. The giving of value part is huge because when I was growing up um, in a poor household that had a lot of love, um, there was never enough month at the end of the money. And what really I feel like my family had this belief that rich people were crooks. All rich people were doing shady things or they were they were getting, they were taking from others and they were being they were being wrong about their way of getting it. And now through studying true wealth and money and, and through what I've learned is it's about giving more and it's about bringing the value out and then leveraging and how can you help more and more people. And in this day and age, we're so blessed to have the internet and to have social media and to have YouTube and the potential for reach of messages and value and help is pretty magnificent. Um, and you also mentioned like just start giving more value even at your current job, right? Like every day you show up, go be the most valuable employee you possibly can and watch what happens, right? It's so easy for us. I worked in the corporate world for six, seven, eight years before even going to college. And it's so easy for people to start off with a bang and hit the ground running. But then over time we get in these routines and it's kind of like, oh yeah, alt tab, I'm gonna look over here, oh, watch a couple YouTube videos. But being the most productive and ambitious individual at your work, whatever you're doing, do it with excellence and bring as much value to it. And that's that's really where magic can happen. And I do think, like you said, it's not linear and I don't know, like it's not necessarily about making more. That doesn't really matter. It, it really is about like understanding that it's an energy flow and that by honoring the energy that it is and realizing that it's simply a example of value or it's a kind of a measure of value, then you realize you can have a positive relationship with it and see it as a tool for bringing more good to your life, more good to your family's life, more good to the things you care about. If that's water to tribes and families and villages in Africa, great. If that's protecting the rainforest, there's, I don't remember who it was. I wish I would have looked. I believe he's the CEO of a telecommunications company out of like Switzerland. And he bought like 400,000 acres or something crazy of the Amazonian rainforest. And he literally is so wealthy that he's just like, nope, you're not burning this part of the forest down. You're not turning this into cattle grazing. Our world needs rainforests. And he single-handedly through his wealth decided, boom, I'm going all in this way. Andrew Carnegie, for example, like Andrew Carnegie was once the wealthiest man in the world. I think he was like a steel baron or something. Back in the 18th, turn of the century stuff, when he died, he left all of his money to the library system. And if you've ever been to a library in the United States of America, if you've ever used the internet or checked out a book, the odds are it was funded by that man and from his legacy. And it's insane what the potential and what those libraries do for all of these small communities across North America. And to think that was just one man's legacy, that was what he decided to do with his money. And that, that's amazing. That's really inspiring to me to yeah. see people play on that big of a scale. And I think that's a, a hugely important point that money and spirituality totally can go together because money is not evil, money is not good, money is simply a flow of energy and in opening ourselves up to a greater flow of energy, of abundance, 
we can then choose what we're flowing it towards, whether that is preserving rainforests, which I just love that and I want to look more into that because that, that we'll, is so amazing. We'll put a link down below in the description. I, I will 100% fact check myself. I might be a little off on the numbers and who it was, <laughs> but I will make sure I get you guys a link to that because it, it's pretty special. Yeah, and so one other thing that I think would be, be cool to talk about is you mentioned the limiting beliefs around money in your family growing up and there's these sayings you know like money doesn't go grow on trees yep. money is the root of all evil we can't afford that was we a very common one that money is hard to come by and i would recommend taking some time to tune in to yourself and write down any negative associations with money you might have it's important to become aware of those in order to heal and release them and in addition to just becoming aware of the specific beliefs around money the sayings around money i think clearing around your flow of abundance is emotional clearing in general is going to be powerful so where are you trapped in negativity? Where are you holding on to a lower vibration? You in your full light, in your power, in your authentic truth and purpose are in the flow of abundance. You're giving value, you're receiving, you're helping people, you're being justly rewarded and compensated. And you come into alignment with that aspect of yourself, that highest version of yourself through both meditating and expanding and growing, but also through clearing and taking a good honest look and noticing where are you holding on to limiting beliefs, frustration, density, judgment towards others, just that belief in lack. Um, so releasing out, out negative beliefs in general. Has, do you agree that that's been kind of totally. a part of opening to abundance? Absolutely. And one other thing that we took on and I really took on at one point, I don't remember where I learned this from, but it was the idea that until you prove to the universe that you can manage what you have, you're not going to be blessed with more. And I remember when we first got together and like... I, I brought almost $50,000 in student loan debt to the table in this relationship, right? So I was pretty far negative. You were nowhere near, like you were even, and I was negative and we were both broke, right? But it was in that thought of like, okay, until I can manage this, I won't be blessed with more. And at first it was, everything was fear-based. I didn't know how much I'd have at the end of the month. I didn't know if I could make my student loan payments that month. I didn't know exactly if I had enough for rent or sometimes I would mail off a check for rent or hand off a check to my landlord for rent and I wouldn't know if that check was going to bounce or not. And the feeling that gave me in my being was terrible, was far from a positive vibration, which that vibration, that feeling of lack, that feeling of fear, that feeling, oh gosh, I was gonna have again, then I'm gonna get a $20 bounce check fee, and oh my god, then I'm gonna have to explain it. Oh, all that vibration was drawing more of that to me. So, literally, the process of like, how much do I have? How much just came in? How much are my monthly bills? Starting a spreadsheet, actually managing, learning how to manage my money. And what's what's really crazy to me is. They never taught us that in school. Like, how did I how did I get a college <laughs> education? I'm not even talking booking. I'm talking like balance a checkbook. Like how to be an adult in this world. Like I it's literally not taught. it's not taught at all, which leaves us kind of in that reactionary state. And I think there's reasons it's not taught. And I don't think those reasons are for our benefit. I think it's for to keep us in that on our heels, always playing reactionary to it. But it wasn't until I really started to study it, how do I manage it? What is a budget? How do I budget? Okay, this is how much comes in, that's how much goes out. Wow, that's how much I have to eat out every month. Cool, don't spend more than that and everything's good. And once I, I feel it was such a subtle shift from going from that like, ooh, I hope there's enough on this check to pay for rent, to okay, I've got this. I've only got $60 in the bank at the end of the month, but I know I'm okay. And at that point, it was like a like a like a lower chakra, like like a security thing. Like my at my lowest core, I felt okay, I'm secure. 
I've got this. And from that point, I feel like I was able to build and we were able to build more on top of that and get from being reactionary to becoming proactive with it to getting excited about how we can change the world and and that that vision has has really grown from that simple act of learning how to manage it right and if you are reactionary right now if you resonated with what miles is saying and you're like wow but i am there now um know that you have support available in spirit in shifting your vibration and so when you catch yourself in that fear and anxiety and worry angels help, help. angels help me to feel secure the other thing in addition to asking for angelic assistance that we have both used extensively is affirmations yeah. i am a magnet to money when you're writing those bills out, every dollar I spend comes back to me multiplied. I am worthy of abundance. I am in the flow of money. Money loves me. Yeah, Bruce Lipton, who studied and, and did medical studies at Stanford, and he kind of like has founded the eugenics area about how we can re-transform, we can transform our DNA through our thoughts. He says that our subconscious minds were programmed by the time we were six years old. And I don't know about you, and I don't know about you, I kind of know a little bit more about you. I know where I was when I was six years old, and my family couldn't afford anything. Scarcity. I, I, very, very scarcity, very reactionary. My dad had a good job. We were renters, but it was like this treadmill of life. We lived in a very high cost of living area where I grew up. So the, I can't afford that, money doesn't go on trees, we can't afford that, that was programmed into my subconscious mind. And these affirmations, that's how you rewire your brain. It, there's, there's no fast way to do it. It's a slow process. Meditation, I would say one thing to add to that is increasing your vibration before going to the affirmations, right? Coming from a point of try, do what you need to do to get your vibration up before you sign those bills and you say thank you yeah. to everyone. And like on the memo, when you're writing your check, if you write checks to your cell phone company, Put a big thank you and a smiley face. Put some love thank into that. Thank you for the data. Thanks for the data. Like, you know, and mail it off and, and somehow find a way to shift that vibration because that's your point of attraction. And when that shifts, everything in the world around us shifts. And if this seems a little far-fetched to you, if it seems silly, our minds, our hearts, our energy are so, so powerful. And Miles and I have changed our relationship with money. We have gone from being incredibly broke to living abundantly and so we can tell you that it is possible to make the shift. I know you have a good book recommendation around oh, money. Gosh, which one? Um, several. I would have to say that one that really enlightened me was called The Millionaire Next Door and it is a scientific study, it might have been a university study of a thousand millionaires and I think what's happened in our society is the idea of a millionaire and like media portrays these kind of like lifestyles that are not actually what real millionaires live. The, you know what neighborhood it is in your area, the big McMansions that's got two BMWs and they got a boat and a trailer. Like those people, 99% of the time, they are flat broke. They're living paycheck to in paycheck. Debt. They're in debt. They're they're literally they can't stop. The treadmill's going faster and faster. They're living twenty, thirty thousand dollar a month lifestyles, and they're making nineteen or twenty nine thousand. At the end of the year, they're piling up more debt. And really understanding through that book, the millionaire next door was like, wow. Like the average millionaire in America drives a ten year old pickup truck. They shop at J C Penney. It's not this big lavish thing. And that really got me to shift my perspective of like, enjoy what I have. I don't need a bunch of things. We live a very minimalist lifestyle, right? Like everything about the way we live our life now is very conscious and it's, we think about things and like the long-term repercussions of deciding to buy a boat or a $300,000 motorhome or all these crazy things. And you can control your state. I think that's brilliant that you shared that. Even if you don't feel very abundant right now what can you do to feel more abundant you know is that going for me it's like getting out in nature Absolutely. i'm the richest person in the world i have all these trees or walking outside at night under the stars like i am rich in starlight and yeah. it is amazing 
meditating is just filling with that abundance of love and high vibrational it's spiritual vibration. energy. It's just shifting your perspective. Like true happiness does not come from things. It doesn't come from driving a Mercedes Benz. It doesn't come from wearing fancy watches and lots of bling. This brand versus that brand will not bring you not happiness. At all. But that's the messaging and that's the programming that media and advertising wants us to believe because that's how the machine works. And if that, I mean, that that's it. Like literally that's the game and learning how to kind of like, I don't want to say put the blinders onto that per se, but like to understand that that's a slippery slope that's and tricky game. That's interesting that we've kind of come full circle to this because I think that's probably another part of where this whole money and spirituality don't go together combination comes from because having money in and of itself is not problematic however money is projected in a way in our world that promotes materialism so just keep in mind there's a huge difference between being abundant and being materialistic chasing after things in the material versus manifesting enough for yourself and then giving back and being in that positive flow of abundance, that balanced giving and receiving, flowing money towards what you want to see more of in the world versus trying to accumulate things and possessions to fill a void. Because ultimately, we don't bring possessions with us when we leave this earth. Not at Very all. true. And so what you do bring with you is the accumulation of life experiences, the soul growth, the love, those things carry on with you into your next life or if you're going to go live off planet for a while or whatever you're doing after this life, there's lots of options, but it is the soul growth that continues on with you. And what about you for books? Was there any books or courses or anything we've gone through over the years, the audiobooks we listen to on road trips that really kind of like gave you something that so was there, like, wow. There is a book called Busting Loose from the Money Game by Robert Scheinfeld that I really feel helped me to shift my beliefs and perspectives around money. It's maybe a little out there. I don't necessarily resonate with all of Robert's work and yeah. teachings. It's got a little bit of like an internet marketer kind of like, yeah. like the cover a looks a little cheesiness maybe. Cheesy, but there's some, there's a valuable practice in there the that if thing. you yeah if you feel inspired to read the book, it's kind of about what I was talking about of claiming your energy back from negative experiences. So he teaches the process where if you feel really triggered by that electricity bill, realizing that some of your energy is tied up in that. And so you can like burst that egg and reclaim your energy to become more in sync with your true authenticity and with your abundant self being free from the money game, which is awesome. ultimately being in abundance, yep. which is ultimately the true state of the universe, the true state of everyone, of all of our nature, we are abundant beings. We're not limited. Lack is a construct of the third, fourth dimension. Lack is a construct of the illusion. And as we ascend and tune into more of our light and tune into the flow of money and abundance, we're able to operate from a place of abundance, literally like hovering above the experience of lack and density and doubt. Yeah. Anything else you want to share about spirituality and money before we wrap up? You know, I feel like we have to get good at this 3D game we're playing, right? This human experience we're having. Like we all know that we're, we're spiritual beings having a human experience. And I mean, everyone who's found your channel, like we like that feeling the spiritual feeling those those high vibrational things and like we get there and if we're ignoring the money game completely and if we're ignoring aspects of our 3d life like real life you know the, the real world quote unquote we're never going to be able to kind of really achieve the true fulfillment i think that we all want on the spiritual side it's almost like a level in a video game or but it's not linear at the same time so it's just it's Whatever you feel and your feelings are about wealth and money and abundance, like that's okay. It's a worthy 
challenge. It's a worthy study. It's, it's, it's a worth part of the game of, of life. Energy. Yeah, I'm, I'm so, so let's glad, get good at it. Let's I'm master so it. I'm so glad that you brought that up because ultimately the ascension path we're walking is the middle path. So on one side, we have pure materialism, totally disconnected from spirit, totally disconnected from your higher self, totally in that just keeping up with the Joneses, materialism. I am what I wear, I am what I drive. The spiritual realm does not exist, I don't care, materialism. On the other side, there's ungrounded spirituality. There's meditating for 27 hours a day in a cave, and not eating food and being totally spaced out and not even able to interact with other humans because you are so out there. Neither of those are the Christic ascension path of mastery. The ascension path that we keep talking about, that we keep returning to is the middle path. It's being balanced between living in this world, being in the material world, but not being of the world. So retaining your connection to the material world, but also lifting into the spiritual world. The middle path, the path of balance, and on that middle path there's incredible abundance, incredible life experience, authentic connection with other people, growth and synchronicity and love and just so, so much to be thankful for. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Life is amazing when you're truly in the flow and I hope this video is helpful in giving you some tips and ideas of how you can get in greater sync with money and with abundance. And spirituality and how they work together. Um, Curious what you thought about the video. Leave the comments. I do read the comments. I don't comment on every one, but on the ones I'm in, I I like to pop in. So if you liked it, give give a thumbs up and Yeah, and if you have any input about your experience with money and spirituality, comment below, like the video, subscribe here on YouTube if you haven't already. And then I will see you on the next video.